Hi, I'm Ray Ridley, and welcome to part two of this series in the Switching Power Supply Design Primer. In this uh, second part of the series, we're going to show you why power supply design is hazardous. And you should always be careful if this is a new field to you. Even if you've been doing it for many years, it's a good reminder that what you're dealing with is dangerous circuits. If you remember in part one of the series, we first looked at the linear power supply, took the AC input, an isolation step-down transformer, rectifier diodes, bulk filtering capacitors, then your semiconductors, power and control, load filtering to your DC output. And what I want to focus on is not so much what's on the right here, but what exactly the isolation transformer was doing for you. And this was really nice to have for linear power supplies in that it offers a barrier between the AC input, which is dangerous, and all your electronics, which you're trying to protect. And there's four things that the power transformer does for you. It provides isolation, it provides safety, filtering from noise on the AC line and unsafe voltages, and it provides protection for all of your electronics, for yourself, and for the customers of your power supply. When we went to switching power supply design, all the blocks of the power supply were moved around. And what we have is rectification and the bulk filtering are now right across the AC input line immediately followed by the power semiconductors and the control semiconductors. And in the next series of this video, we will talk about what the kind of uh, problems that causes. Then we have the isolation transformer, then output rectification and load filtering to the DC output. Now let's talk about the front end of our switching power supplies, which is where the safety concerns first come into play. What we do is we take the AC input line, rectifiers right across the line, and then bulk filtering. And that bulk filtering will consist of a fairly large capacitor can, depending on the power rating of your power supply, and this capacitor will be charged up to the peak of the AC input line. And that prevent, presents your, your first real hazard in the circuit. Here's an example of uh, one of these capacitors here. And uh, this one is actually being charged up to, the, to, to uh, an input, a DC voltage, and uh, even though it's been sitting on my bench here for about 20 minutes, we're going to find there's a fair amount of energy still in this cap. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, those of us who have been in the industry a long time, we call this the screwdriver test, where we take a screwdriver and we put it across the terminals of our power supply, or in this case, I'm going to put it right across the terminals of, of this capacitor. So, uh, step one, always safety glasses if you don't wear normal glasses. Step two, and... Uh, one point here, don't try this at home, okay? Here we go, we're going to take this and short this capacitor out, which was charged up a little while ago, with our screwdriver. Yikes! Uh, it doesn't matter how many times I do that, it always makes me jump, makes me nervous. And just imagine now this capacitor is actually hooked up to the electronics that are following on, and you can imagine what that kind of energy capability is going to do to your power supply design if you're not careful. So, there you go. If you want to see some more videos from Ridley Engineering, please go visit Ridley TV on YouTube. Um, if you want to join our Power Supply Design Center on LinkedIn, we've got 3,000 engineers talking about issues like these and in-depth issues of power supplies. And also you can go to RidleyEngineering.com and join our design group there. Thanks very much for watching.